Hello, this is Mary Grace, and you're listening to the very first episode of Misadventures with Mary Grace podcast. I am so excited. Screams! I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, is that Travis Scott in the beginning of her theme song entrance? No. It's me. It's me, Mary Grace. If you couldn't tell, that's me with auto-tune. And you know what? It's always been a dream of mine to be auto-tuned. And I said, this is my chance to do it on my podcast. So you heard it first. You heard it here first. And then that laugh is also mine. I slapped some echo on that bitch. And it's like I'm in another room. It's like me laughing in another room. You want to hear it live? Here we go. (laughs) Uh, Yep, that's my laugh. My laugh, you know, differs depending on uh, how funny something is. You know, sometimes I cackle, sometimes I wheeze. If something's really funny, I wheeze. But you guys aren't ready for the wheeze. And that'll come naturally. I'm a whole grandmother sometimes. But that's just me. That's just me in my lungs. It's what it is. If only I had tears running down my face right now, I would wipe them. Because guess what? I produce that beat. Not only am I a comedian, but I produce that beat. I'm a producer now. It took me two whole days, over 48 hours, and lots of contemplating my life. But I finished it. And it's there. And you're hearing it live. And if you want a beat from me... Don't DM me, because I'm not going to make a beat. Because it took me years. It took time off my life, but you know what? I'm auto-tuned in it, and I'm laughing in it, and it's here to stay. And there's definitely going to be some more laughing and more auto-tune in the future. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about where I come from, where I'm going, and all the things that make me who I am. But before we get into that, I just want to say that on this podcast, I will talk about my life as a comedian with or without the mic, and it will be one big, crazy, wild, fun, unfiltered misadventure. So put on your seatbelts, or don't because we wild out here, and because there's no rules on this podcast, we're going 30 and a 25. So thank you so much and enjoy the ride. Bitchin' like a pigeon. Let's get it started. So I'm a comedian from Elizabeth, New Jersey, 908, 908, rip. Do you know what celebrities from here? From Eastwick, from The Wick? Judy motherfucking Bloom. Like, who do you have that's from your city? We have Judy Bloom. She wrote the books Super Fudge and Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, and some adult books, and one, which is my personal favorite, is Hey God, It's Me, Margaret. I would love to one day, like, write her a letter and see where she's at. Because I know she's not in Elizabeth anymore. She's gone. She's gone with the wind. She's alive. Which is, that's what's important. She's alive. But I want to send her a letter. And I want to say, hey, Judy. It's me, Mary Grace. And that's it. I don't want to write anything else in it. I just want to send that. I just wonder what she would think if she saw that. But if we had a book, like, if I had to write a children's book, it would be about Yertle the Turtle. Yertle the Turtle. He would be a turtle that hangs out on the side of one and nine, smoking weed in front of the Grace and Joy smock shop. Which no longer exists because I guess they got sick of it being misspelled. You know, it was been there it's been there for years probably. Like I honestly just would have loved to have been there when they had the person put up the sign. And it said smock shop instead of smoke shop. Because apparently the guy just let him, whoever owns that place, just let it happen. But yeah, it's no longer there. And I miss it. Because 1 and 9 is like less of an entity without it. It's missing zest now. Something has been lost. If not for anybody else, for me. But hear me now and believe me later. Give me 10 whole years 
and I will be the next biggest thing after Judy Bloom to come out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. I'm going to speak it into existence and look back on this podcast in 10 years and say, wow. Like, I'm going to be royalty under the crown jewel of Elizabeth, Judy Bloom. So comedy has always been my passion. I come from two very funny parents. My dad even pursued acting for some time. But I knew even when I was a kid, it's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I grew up watching SNL and I watched that with my dad and I wouldn't miss it. We would watch it every single Saturday. My favorite has always been Kristen Wiig. She makes me laugh so much and she's such an inspiration to me. Just the impressions she does, she's so talented. And I've just I've always taken a lot of notes from her as a comedic actress. And I hope to one day emulate that. I absolutely love Target Lady. Welcome to Target! And Baby Hands. She's so talented, and I love her. Here's a crazy tidbit. I actually went to see, four or five years ago, I went to see Sia in Pennsylvania, and Kristen Wiig was actually one of the dancers. I couldn't believe my eyes, and I was flipping out, and it was, it was really a spectacle, because none of my friends knew who she was, so I was the only one that was getting really excited, but I just couldn't believe I actually saw her dancing live. She was dancing on broken glass and shit. It was amazing. So going back to Saturday Night Live, I remember as a kid when the theme song would come on, I would be like, and starring Mary Grace Sopran. So it's just a lot of fun memories with that show. And along with loving Saturday Night Live, I remember throughout grammar school and high school and even into college, I would come home every day from work or school and I would go into the center of my living room and I would tell my entire family the day shenanigans and just all the stories and all of the things that would happen to me throughout my day and how I would have like a I guess I have like a comedic perspective on things and I would just I love storytelling that's definitely the core of it it's just wanting to share stories with people and and want their reaction, and you want them to smile, you want them to laugh, you want them to relive that experience with you, and that's always been such a huge part of my childhood. Not much has changed. I have just taken that storytelling that I did as a child and have brought it into my adult life through stand-up. My style of stand-up is called anecdotal. Anecdotal means storytelling, so I've just realize that I've always gravitated towards that. Even as a kid, I would do impressions and accents in front of my friends and family. This is what it's turned into. (laughs) Life, in essence, is a bunch of stories. It just so happens that a lot of mine are ridiculous. So I want to talk about my childhood for a second. My parents divorced when I was very, very young. And after that, my dad moved back to New York because that's where he's from. So I spent a lot of time growing up there. And Maspeth, Queens will always have a special place in my heart. So I'm just very blessed to have roots in Queens and Long Island. And I've just learned so much from being in all of these different places growing up. I went to Catholic school my whole life, grammar school, all the way up until high school. And I went to school in a very urban neighborhood, so my class was very diverse. And let me tell you, I can't whistle, and that last, that was as close to a whistle as I'm ever going to get, and you guys witnessed it. You just witnessed me almost whistle by making that S sound. So I was the only white kid, so I gained a lot of perspective, I learned a lot about different people, and it was such an awesome way to grow up. I just think it's really important to be cultured and that, you know, being around people different from me growing up just made me understand that nobody's better than anybody and the way you look and how much money you have doesn't make you different from anybody else. We're all human and that's a beautiful thing. So my school didn't have any drama or comedy programs, so I had to find ways I remember this one time, 
My class was going to perform some scenes from one of Shakespeare's plays at Ryder University. And it was me and my two friends and we were the sprites. I was like, can we sing this sprite song to the music of Beyonce's partition? And our teacher was like, yeah, because she I don't even think she knew who Beyonce was. So it's fantastic. And like the song is majorly inappropriate. But we were using just the the music from the song. I remember we were on stage and they're playing the music and we were sprites that were conjuring up spirits around one of Shakespeare's friends or something. I don't remember that play at all, but we were singing it and it was like, come on, let Hamlet's friend pass. Let's Hamlet's friend pass. Come on, let the sprites sing the song, sing the song, sing the song. And it was fantastic. And I remember we won the best believe we won the Destiny's Child Award. What? I still have that thing in my room. The Sprites put on a show that day. And I remember I asked my teacher's husband to film it. And that's when your girl had like an iPod 2. And he filmed it and he, he had shaky hands. So he was, when I got it, it was just like a big blur. But we, the crowd went wild for those Beyonce singing Sprites. And I was just so funny because I'm so surprised my teacher didn't say, you know, let me... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. But that song is about, I think, having sex in a limo. I don't know. I haven't listened to that song in a long time. But it is so inappropriate. We were we were Destiny's Child that day. We were Destiny's Child. We were the child of Destiny. Ah, oh, white joke. After high school, I went to school at UCC, Union County College. Can't spell success without UCC, baby. I studied communications. And... They also had no drama club. Well, they did have one, but it was just starting. And I was playing softball at the time. And that was the love of my life. Softball has always been super important to me. I love softball. Um, I love baseball. So that's where that started. And I played in high school. I played in college. And that was so much fun. We had like two wins in two years. And it was fantastic. There was a lot of drama. We had a Russian coach. I would always call her Sasha. Sasha. Her name was Sasa. Like, it was spelled S-A-S-A. I used to call her Sasha. And then everybody else in the team started calling her that. And then she was like... She would laugh, but you could tell, like, she did not want to be called Sasa. And I pretty much got paid to play because you get paid $10 per game for food. So I, I was making money playing on that softball team. I have so many fun memories from that. And we had the... We had the UCC Owls jackets... And I remember we tra- we had to promote people to go on the team, and I was putting the flyers everywhere, including the bathroom, and somebody was ripping them down. So many good times. And, yeah, so I wanted to do drama there as well. And they did not have, like, they didn't have a lot of people in there. It was just starting, and I didn't, I never really acted before that. Only, like, the sprites. I did the sprites, and I did some dancing in some plays at my school, and that was just dancing to Katy Perry dark horse so that's not a lot of experience we danced to her at the talent show actually and at that time I was sort of kind of thinking of being a teacher I I wanted that was also something I've, I've I was looking into when I was younger and also in high school I wanted to do teaching because I absolutely adore kids and I can't wait to have my own someday we will all match all the time and they will all be named Mary Grace because I wanted to do teaching I was looking into Kane College because they're they're known for that. They have a really good program for that. And I don't know, it was I've always had comedy was always like a permanent fixture in my mind. So I, I just didn't really know how to pursue that honestly. And I also wanted to do sports casting at one time. I didn't know how open mics worked or anything like that. Thinking I'll go to school to be a teacher and then I can do comedy on the side. And I was also looking into Montclair State University for media production. They have a great TV studio, I've heard. So it was between MSU or Kane at the time. And then UCC had some kind of college fair. And my best friend Chloe was like, hey, are you going to check out William Patterson University? Because they're going to be here as well. And I was checking out a lot of the other schools. And I was like, I didn't even... I've never, to be honest, I didn't even hear of that school before Chloe told me about it. And I went to speak to the lady that came to represent William Patterson. I had no clue about them. And I sat down with the lady and I told her comedy's my dream. That's what I want to pursue. And she said, you know, we're like 
one of the only three schools with a comedy program in the country, right? And I was like, no, I didn't know that. And I was completely sold. And after that conversation, I knew where I was going to college for my four year. I never looked back and I went right to William Patterson. And it was honestly the best decision of my entire life. So I went there and I studied media production and I minored in comedy and theater. There I was able to do things I've wanted to do my entire life. I got introduced to stand-up, to improv, to sketch. The group there that did improv was Pioneer Players, and I love them so much. I did performing, acting, radio, Brave New Radio, the number one college station in the nation. And I did some DJing for them. On Air Personality was so much fun. I took so much from that. From there, I also did some sports casting, and it's really cool. My teacher was Kurt Sieglin from Channel 12 News. Kurt motherfucking Sieglin was my teacher. And he was really cool. And I learned so much from him. And I remember we had to commentate on some sports event that we filmed on our free time. And I went and I filmed girls volleyball at Kane. And it was awesome. They had... Some rapper was there performing. It was like Little little Slap Slap or something like that. I forgot what his name was. He was big. Not A Boogie with the hoodie. Ah, I don't remember who it was, but I was like, wow, these these people are really dressed up to go to this volleyball game. And uh, they they had some kind of like their spring jam or something. So, and we had to commentate on it when we got back to school. And this one girl, she bent down to hit the ball. And I was like, oh, she's, that's what I look like at the club. And everybody laughed. And Chris Siegelin laughed. So that was one for the books. And I remember when he left, I was like, <laughs> I love you. And uh, like jokingly, you know, like that this, this guy's a newscaster and he's teaching my class. And he left and everybody left. And it was just, I didn't mean to say it, it just slipped and it happened. But I left it off and so did everyone else. So I'm happy that that happened because it could have been a very odd situation. At William Patterson, I just felt completely at home. And I felt truly alive. You know, you feel different when you're doing what you love, when you're doing something you're passionate about. I just had really the time of my life there. William Patterson showed me that it was possible to do what I've always dreamt of doing. Anything's possible if you have a passion for it. So I graduated in 2018. And since then, I've worked with Lucas Prada. He sings the song, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 Like, he was one of my mentors, for sure, along with Lexi Cullen Baker. She is also, she was my stand-up teacher back at William Patterson. They have both changed my life. They really looked out for me and showed me the ropes, and I'm just so grateful for that. And after working with Lucas Prada, I went to work at WPLJ, the legendary WPLJ, where I worked with Todd and Jade in the morning. I worked with them, and I helped them come up with content for the show. I remember having to be on the 3.30 train, and that was insane, because I was cross-eyed. I don't even know how I got there sometimes. It was really cool seeing the city, you know, just awakening at that time. Two times that were absolutely amazing that I will never forget were the two times that they actually let me go on air, which was really surreal. The first time I talked about when I was little, I went into a CVS and I was reading a joke book, and this just speaks to how things have not changed one bit, except for I I don't steal things, but (laughs) I was in CVS reading this joke book, and I was so enthralled with this joke book, I walked out of CVS with it, and the metal detectors, apparently it's not metal detectors, but the things that go off didn't go off, and I told my dad, I said, oh my gosh, dad, like, I I just stole this, I walked out, because I was reading it as I walked out, I was so into that book, I must have been like seven or eight, And I remember walking back into the CVS with my hands up saying, I didn't steal this. It was an accident. I was reading it and I walked out of the store. I'm sorry. Everybody watch. I'm putting it back now. Please don't call the police. It was fantastic. The second time I was on air was when we were talking about classes, crazy classes that people have taken. And I went on air and spoke about the time where I took a stripping class with my friends. Hopefully I can get that on here one day, but I was talking about our instructor, she came out with fog and strobe lights, this woman, 
and she kicked her heels so hard and so high over her head she flipped over and that is something that will remain with me to the day I die. It was scary yet glorious. Before I close out the first ever episode of the Misadventures with Mary Grace podcast, I just want to say my dream is to make people laugh, whether it's doing stand-up or writing for a sitcom or performing in a sitcom. I know my purpose is to entertain somehow. So I'm doing what makes me happy and I'm doing what makes me laugh. And I'm so happy you could join along with me. On my next episode, I will talk about what I've been up to during this quarantine. So make sure you tune in for next week's episode and follow me on my Instagram is Mary Grace Sopran. That's C Z A P R A N. And I also have the Misadventures Podcast Instagram, which is Misadventures Podcast. Follow me on Twitter, Mary G Sopran. And my YouTube is Mary Grace Sopran as well. Thank you so much for coming on this misadventure with me, and I will catch you next week. I love you all. Thank you, cousins. And who's ready for the laugh? Because here it comes. (laughs) 